Welcome to Accounting in Focus. I think that weighted average periodic is probably the easiest of all the methods and weighted average perpetual is probably the most difficult. So you're going to kind of see um, you're going to see the easiest method and the hardest method in the same video. Okay, remember periodic means that we're only doing the calculation at the end of the period. Okay, let's add up the number of units we have. 200, 150 is 350, 450, 500 units total. And 500 and 500 is a thousand dollars total. So that's my goods available for sale. Remember we always have to tie back to that number when we add our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory together. Okay, so now let's go through also let's add up the number of units. 325 units sold, which means my ending inventory, 500 minus 325, I've got 175 units in ending inventory. <clears throat> Remember the purpose of this is to figure out the cost, right? We need the cost for our income statement, what is our cost of goods sold, and then we need the cost of ending inventory, which is going to go as an asset on our balance sheet. So let's do periodic first. Okay. Like I said, this is probably the easiest method. Weighted average means that we need to figure out the weighted average cost of all the units that we have. We know that the cost of the units was a thousand. We know that we had 500 units. So if I have 500 units that cost a thousand dollars, I'm going to take a thousand dollars divided by 500 units and that gives me two dollars per unit. Okay, so the average cost is two dollars per unit. Now when you're doing this calculation, it makes sense to kind of do a double check. Like, does this two dollar number make sense? Okay, well, my range, right, I have units at a dollar at the low end and I've got units at four dollars at the high end, okay? That means that my weighted average needs to be somewhere between one dollar and four dollars. Okay. <clears throat> now, if, so now it's really easy. I sold three hundred and twenty-five units at a weighted average cost of two dollars each. So, three twenty-five times two dollars is six fifty. Okay. So this is my cost of goods sold. Cost of, here, let me undo that. Boop. Okay, there we go. Cost of goods sold is 650. My ending inventory would be 175 times two dollars. So let's see, so it'd be 350 for ending inventory. And if I add up my cost of goods sold and my ending inventory, I get a thousand dollars, okay, which was my goods available for sale. Goods available for sale. So I always want to make sure I tie back to that thousand, okay? So periodic weighted average is really easy, okay? Quick and easy. Now, perpetual, perpetual, we have to do some more calculating. Let me change my color here. Let's go back to the bluish green. So under perpetual, perpetual is kind of a pain because under perpetual we need to do the weighted average calculation, this calculation here, every time we have a sale. Okay. The reason we have to do that is because remember under perpetual I need to figure out what is the cost of the units I have at that time? Okay, so that's why this gets a little bit more complicated. So let's start. So notice here, like dates weren't important, right? We could just take the 325 units that were sold over the course of the month times two dollars, boom, we're done. Okay, this gets a little bit more complicated. So on 1-4, one 1-4 four. One four I sold 150 units. What do I have on 1-4? Well, I've got the units from the beginning inventory and I've got the units from 1-3. Okay, so I've got 300, 350 units 
and how much did I pay for those? I paid 200 and I paid another three, so that's 500. So I've got $500 that I spent and those units, I have 350 units. So if I do the math, I can bring up my calculator. Okay, so I've got 500 divided by 350. Okay, and that equals, let's see, we'll say a dollar 42, that's an 8, so we'll round that up, so a dollar 43. Okay, so a dollar 43 per unit. So let's get that out of the way. We'll put a dollar 43. Oh, hold on. We're having a technical difficulty. There we go. Dollar 43. When you're doing weighted average, you're going to have a little bit of rounding. Um, so, you know, don't let that freak you out if you don't tie exactly back to the thousand because we did do a little bit of rounding. So a dollar forty-three. How many units did we sell? We sold one hundred and fifty units at one fifty. And again, we're going to need the calculator back. Okay. So here we'll put it down here this time. Okay, so we've got 143 per unit times 150 units, because that's how many were sold. And that is 214.50. 214.50. Okay, so let's put this over here. Equals 214.50. Okay, so that's my cost of goods sold for the one four transaction. Okay, so <clears throat> on one twelve. Okay, now one twelve. What do I have? Okay, well let's see. We sold one hundred fifty of these five hundred units, right? So we have. Th let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. That was five hundred dollars. So we've got of the 350, we sold 150. So I've got 200 at 143. Okay, because that was the cost we assigned to those, right? We had 350 units. The average cost was 143. We sold 150 of those units. So there were 200 left. Okay, so 200 units at 143. Then what else did I have by 112? By 112, I also had. The 100 units at $3. So we got to factor that into our calculation. 100 units at $3. So that's 300. Okay. Let's do the calculation for the other ones. So let me bring my calculator back here. We'll clear this out. 200 times $1.43 is two dollar or two hundred eighty six dollars so let's get that out of the way so equals two eighty six so I've got three hundred units and the total value of those three hundred units was five hundred eighty six dollars okay so again we're gonna divide we're gonna take five eighty six divided by 300 because there's 300 units in the pool okay so let's do the math 586 divided by 300 units okay and now I'm at 195.3 so that's 195 Okay, so I'm actually going to write this down here. 195 per unit. Okay, and we've got, let's see, we sold 75 units. So times 75 units. And that equals, love having this calculator here, 1.95 times 75 so that is 146.25 okay 
146.25. Okay, so this is the cost of my units that were sold on 112. Okay, so now one more calculation. 129. <clears throat> 129 we sold 100 units. What do we have left? Okay, well we had 300 units at 195. Okay, we sold 75 of those units so I have 225 left from that pool at 195. And then I also have, we purchased these 50 units here we have those now. 50 units at four dollars. So I know that's 200. Bring the calculator back up. So let's see, 225 times 195 is equal to 438.75. Four thirty-eight seventy-five. So that's six thirty-eight seventy-five total. I have two twenty-five plus fifty. I have two hundred seventy-five units. Okay, so let's do our math. So divide by two seventy-five. Okay, so notice every time. Ooh, let's undo that. I got a little bit. There we go. I screen shifted a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So 275. Um, so if we do the math on that, yeah, let's put this over here so we can see all the numbers. So let's see, $638.75. Divided by 275 units. So I get, let's see, 232.2, so that'd be 232. Okay, so I'll put this under here. $2.32. Okay, so that's my cost per unit. <clears throat> um, notice how my cost per unit has been going up right with every transaction so I was at 143 because it was the weighted average between 1 and 2 now I'm doing then I did the weighted average of 143 and 3 so I get to 195 then I'm doing the weighted average between 195 and 4 so I get 232 so notice that every time I do this I'm within the range right I'm in between 1 and 2 and then I'm in between 143 and 3, okay? <clears throat> and notice if you're doing the absolute average, right? The absolute value average between 1 and 2 would be 1.5. But because I have 200 units, okay, I've got 200 units versus 150 units, my number should be skewed closer to 1 than it is to 2. Okay, so always make sure that your numbers look reasonable. So in this case, I have a lot more units at 195 than I have at 4, right? So my number's going to be closer to 195 than it is to 4. Okay, and we see that, right? It's 232, so it's scaled very heavily towards 195. Okay, so my, my average cost here is $2.32, okay? And we sold 100 units, so times 100 equals $232. Don't need the calculator for that one. Okay, so now I need to add up the 214.50, the 146.25, and the 232 to get my cost of goods sold for the month. So cost of goods sold is equal to, bring the calculator back up, so I've got 214.50 from the sale on 1.4 plus 146.25. 25 from the sale on 112 plus 232 from the sale on 119 so that equals 592.75 okay so it's cost of goods sold okay 
is 592.75. Okay, let me just check that number to make sure I put it in right. 592.75, excellent. Okay, <clears throat> so that's my cost of goods sold. So now what's my ending inventory? Okay, ending inventory. Okay, I have 175 units left, right? Because I had 275, I sold 100 units. So I've got 175 units. What's the cost of those units? Well, remember, we were going through, okay? We always did, when we took the leftover units, it was always at the previous amount, right? So when we did 200 units left over, it was at 143. We had 225 units left over from here. It was at 195. So now if I've got 175 units left over, it would be at 232. So $2.32. Okay, so bring up the calculator again. This takes a lot of calculations to do this one. <clears throat> 175 times 2.32. 406. <clears throat> okay, 406. Now if we add up, let's do our double check to see if we're close. Okay, so <clears throat> 592.75 plus 406 equals 998 998.75 so that's pretty close right you figure we did a lot of rounding in this problem okay so you know as long as you're within you know a couple dollars then you're good okay so here I got back to 998.75 so I'm comfortable with that calculation 